which kind of sounds like a radio number, but isn't. Uh, radio frequency. Um, this is actually just patter. Okay. According to Twitch, we are now live. If you heard anything before that, I was just doing some audio patter to, to make sure that we were live uh, until we were live. Okay. Um, today we're going to basically continue what we did from last time, last year. Ooh, but not really because uh, the clock when we worked la yesterday, the uh, GMT was already 2020, so we actually were in this year, kind of. Now we're fully in this year all around the world. Um, so that's good or bad. I don't care. It's something. It's what it is. Okay. Um, so earlier we had ta we we drawn all these really nice diagrams, um, and what I had said is that in this and we want to now move them from these diagrams to the C to the C code itself, where we can actually use them. Now what I said earlier is that we'll do the Bessel transformation or A transformation in the code itself which means that we can use these easier coordinates in the code itself. However, I've decided that's sort of a crutch. Um, we can, we should be able to, just using these diagrams, determine the points we need without having to do any sort of translation on the coordinates. We should be able to use the coordinates as is. Uh, so that's one thing we're going to do, so that's one bad thing we're going to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and back this up because I'm going to do another really bad thing here in just a minute. Um, back it up, meaning I'm going to push it to Git, which both pushes it to my local Git and pushes it to GitHub and I think one other place that I no longer remember. Isn't that fun? Okay. Uh, alrighty. Okay. The other bad thing I'm going to do, well, actually several bad things here. Uh, first of all, we're going to uh, this function here, Eclipse Around the World. We're probably going to rename it and we're also going to do a lot of stuff right now that we will eventually functionalize. Um, so we should probably say that here. Oh, actually it's changed on disk. Shiny. I don't think it actually changed any though. Um, because we're going to be computing a lot of vi values like uh, the umbra, the penumbra. Uh, we might even calculate the anti-umbra if I know what, if I can figure out what that is. Um, and we're obviously not going to be able to return all of these values even in a more sophisticated function, or if we did, we'd have to change the signature of the function and all that stuff, which we, we don't want to do right now. Now, I'm going to quickly check to see that I am streaming. Okay, it does appear that I'm streaming, because yesterday I got uh, apparently lost the first 20 minutes of the stream for some weird reason. Um, but yes, it does appear that I am, I am now streaming correctly. Okay, several other bad things we're going to do here. Um, I once got kicked out of a uh, Discord server for Rails. Uh, because I said that you shouldn't, you know, it, it's optional whether you want to declare variables near where they're used. You can declare them all at the beginning, like a lot of C programmers do, or you can declare them, uh, you know, right where, when you want to use them, which is also okay. Uh, this was in reference to, I think, either JavaScript or some language uh, that gives you a, like, if you're inside of a function block, it doesn't quite give you a, a new scope. It gives you, a, like, a partial new scope. And when I say inside a, a function block, I mean, like, a for loop or a while loop, not inside an actual function. So they were still wrong, and they are still evil and mean people, and I hope they suffer immensely, uh, aside from living their own lives, which is probably suffering for them. Uh, but we will, in fact, uh, now uh, adopt that method, uh, just to make my life easier. So no variables there. Um, now below here we have like a play. Oh, actually, this is this is really ugly. Um, so pretty much everything else in this function we're not going to use, and certainly none of the stuff that's below return zero. We're kind of starting fresh. And by kind of, I mean we, we are starting fresh. Uh, except, oh, and actually we're not even using this matrix. So let's, we don't need the matrix. Um, we might actually need V sub C, but okay. So now we're actually doing this pretty nicely. Um, we will still need the radii of all three objects. And then I don't even know if we'll need this. So we'll just get rid of it until we need it. God, I hope this isn't a big mistake. Now, if I'm missing any of my code, y I can go over here and do git diff astro yo mama. Okay, hang on. Oh, unfortunately, because I do the SSH, I do the secure shell mount a little bit later than I should. Um, I sometimes end up with directories that look empty, but even though it's it's a shadow mount, so so I, that's why we saw zero files in here. There's plenty of files in here. 
Um, because I haven't pushed this newer version uh, here, all the code that I deleted is right there. Uh, so we can get it back if we want. Uh, hopefully we will not want. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get the radiuses or radii of all the three objects. There's three radii for each object. And um, I think what I'm going to do here is just because I get confused by it so often, I'm going to pull, you, you can't pull, um, you can't just pull one radii, you have to pull all three because BOD VCDC doesn't give you the option to pull a single radii. There might be a C spice function that does that, but I don't think there is. So what we're going to do here, we're going to declare, um, we're going to declare SR temp. Um, this is horrible behavior. SR temp, TR temp, and QR temp, and as you can imagine, those are going to be the arrays, and then SR TR and QR to hold the actual radii. And we do need to declare, um, a, we need to send it a variable n which it returns telling you how many elements it's returned. In the case of radii, it's always going to be three, but you still need to send it in. So we do need a spice uh, int n. Now, a little bit of caution here that I might, um, one of the problems with using spice specific uh, classes like spice double and spice int is this will not really translate well if you want to convert it to, um, to you know, if you want to use these subroutines in something outside of C, uh, outside of C spice. I'm not going to worry about that for right now, but it is something to keep in mind because some of these routines might be useful outside of C spice. So we might just change this to double int and, you know, s double and all this stuff. Uh, if you do that, you get a warning from C spice, but it does compile. It says, you know, um, uh, blindly casting double to spice double. Okay, caffeine dose there. Okay, so now I'm just going to see if this still compiles because we've made a lot of changes. It should. There's nothing wrong with this code, but let's uh, let's see if it compiles. And to do that, we do this. We do make pipe two. Yep, yep, that's what we do. Dun dun dun. Ooh, incompatible type for argument five. Ooh, yes, it is because I just said I was going to do something and then didn't do it. Okay. Get three radii. Use the first one is going to be the the biggest. Usually the first two are the same, and the third one is the polar. Uh, but we're going to use the first. Okay. So now we have this little chunk of code here. Um, and you might say, hey, if you use a two-dimensional array, you could put this in a for loop. And that, that's true. You could. Um, but I don't really care that much. And I'm pretty sure we're going to need these values. I mean, I haven't, yeah, I've sort of broken the rule of only declaring variables I need, but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to need these. So there we go. Now let's see if that compiles. Doesn't actually do anything, by the way. Doesn't also doesn't return anything. So hang on, let's have it return something ridiculous so it doesn't complain, but that we also know is, uh, is meaningless right now. Hopefully I won't get that confused. Okay, variable QR set but not used. Okay, it did compile. It's warning me that I've set variables that I'm not using, which is fine, because we're just sort of doing that right now. Um, okay, so now the first thing we want to do here is um, we have ST. Let's let's look at the umbral case first. We're going to do the, the umbral case first. Um, la, 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 la. Is this the umbral case, or is this the... Uh, damn it. I have two numbers, one that does the right thing and one that does a different right thing. Penumbra. I think this is correct. This is the umbral cone right here, by the way. The sucker right here. By the way, um, one thing we will maybe need to worry about is it's theoretically possible that when it's not being eclipsed, the planet we're talking about, Q, uh, because we don't have Q on this diagram. This is P, this is T, this is S, and Q is not on this diagram. Could be over here, which makes it look like it's in the umbra, but it's not. In fact, it's sort of the other way around. The, uh, the T would be in the umbra at that point. Uh, obviously, none of this is to scale. Um, so one thing we, we do need to check, and I will forget about it, and since there's no one here to remind me, I, well, let me make a note here. Um, uh, make sure uh, umbral planet is within correct distance. And all that really means is I'm going to check to make sure that the, uh, that the planet's center is closer than T to P. Um, and honestly, it's going to have to be quite, I mean, it's obviously not going to be inside of planet T. It's going to have to be, you know, a li lot closer, but that is a good check. If it's bigger than T, we're not in the situation where we're having an eclipse. 
Uh, you know, except in, you know, it's ridiculous. We could have like maybe like part of the, pl we, the situations don't occur like that. That would require planets to overlap, which they don't. Uh, although there is an XKCD about uh, sort of a joke about that. But anyway, okay. So we need to make sure the umbral point is within. So what we're going to do here is compute. And there's three things we need from here. We need P, the umbral point. Uh, I want this vector that goes from T to S, or you know, from P to S actually, and T to S because vectors are directional. And um, I don't even think we need the slopes here because we're going to be using angles, and we need the angle U. So we need three things here: the point, the cone of the the cone point of the umbra, the angle, or this is actually the half angle at which the umbra spreads out, and the direction that is the middle of the umbra. Obviously here it's the x-axis, in real life it won't be. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this vector here, and if you are, uh, and then to we're going to get this vector because we need it to find p, then we can use p in this vector to get um, u. Um, that's t minus 2. Oh wow. According to this, we can get u. Oh, right, right. Uh, let's see. S t. That's the minus t r. Over s. S r minus t. R. Wow. Uh, actually, let's see. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, s t minus t r. Over s t. That cannot be right. That is one minus t r over s t. That does not seem correct. But let's find out. Um, okay. So this sign of this angle is SR over uh, ST plus PT. Mm, and PT is... Okay, hang on. We're going to have to go into... Uh, we're going to have to go into Mathix again. Uh, I... If this is correct, then we have sort of a, a weird case. Well, actually, maybe we don't, because even though we don't know where p is, we might this this angle we might know simply because uh, we know that its um, we know that its uh, sign has to be its opposite over its hypotenuse, and we sort of know those values. So let's 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 say the word let's as much as possible. So pttts times tr over. Um, SR minus TR. Okay. And then we want, um, well, it's the arc sine of TR over PT, which might be sufficient. Um, and it's also the, uh, it's also SR over PT plus TS, or ST in our case. And I think that actually simplifies to the same thing. Um, maybe. Oh, because we know that, um, yeah, hang on, because we know that, uh, well, actually, we don't know that, do we? We have PT, so we have SR over, opposite over hypotenuse, hypotenuse is PT plus TS, um, or which is ST, because we're calling it that. Um, hmm. <laughs> do I care? I mean, I care if it's wrong. I don't care if it's correct. And I actually just noticed that you can factor... No, you can't quite do that. Hang on. SR over PT plus ST. Um, if this isn't... I, I don't really think this is wrong, to be honest with you. Let's go ahead and subtract that from SR minus TR over TS. Let's see what that does. But I think that will simplify to zero. If it doesn't, we're in trouble. Um, well, it still might. I mean... <laughs> Um, bummer. But actually, this convinces me, uh, if assuming PT is correct, this is SR minus TR over TS. Um, yep, that is correct. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I made a mistake here. Uh, uh, we have decided to use ST instead of TS, so I actually need to um, very slightly modify this to say uh, ST, not TS. Uh, they're identical, it's just I, I've decided to use the variable in that direction. Okay? And so that, of course, screws up the whole everything. Okay, why? <sighs> oh, I don't, it's not a LaTeX formula. 
freaking losers. Okay, so I guess that is... Do I have to actually just save down here? Yes, I do. Okay, there we are. Alright, let's try that again. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. PT equals TS times TR over SR minus... Okay, and then we have one of the ways to do this arc sign is uh, TR over PT. Very simple. And the other way to do it is SR over uh, PT plus ST. And I think those will simplify to the same thing. Really. Really, 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 really. That's all over. Yep, that's correct. And again, I'm not going to spend too much time with this because I'm actually convinced it is correct. Um, so let's see. And that's simple. That should simplify to zero. Um, but it doesn't. Um. Oh, and I'm still using TS somewhere. Oh, I didn't change this. I'm sorry. Uh, I think what happened is when I broke the um, when I broke the formatting, I didn't actually save the data. Okay, now are you going to be happy with? Okay, one more time. Nine hundredth times the charm. Okay, PT <laughs> equals ST times TR over um, SR minus TR. And this is probably a pointless waste of time. Uh, and that life is a pointless waste of time, so can't, can't help you there. Um, so we have TR over PT. Very nice and simple. And then we have SR over PT plus ST. And I think that finally will either simplify or... There we go. And they both simplified SR over ST. Same expression here, and that's the sign, so we take the arc sign. Okay, that took forever. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is compute the umbral um, point, even though I just showed we could compute the umbral angle without the umbral point. I don't want to do that, though. Okay, so we want this vector going in this direction. It, we, we, we actually need to kind of be a little bit careful here, but I think we can handle it. Um, so if you're at T and you want to get to S, you need to take S minus T. Uh, right? T plus S minus T is S. It's a nice way to remember that this is uh, uh, T plus... <laughs> So we need S minus T. Um, and that's the vector, I'm going to call that, I guess, umbral direction. Um, I think we'll have the um vect, the umbral vector. Um, now, a, a sort of a curiosity here is if you can declare a, a variable and then use it at the same time. Um, I, I'll put that as a, t I don't think you can, to be honest. Uh, but it's sort of ugly. It'd be nice if we could declare this variable and use it because all we're going to do with it now is we're going to pass it to a, to a function. Um, declare and use variable at same time. Now, in pass by ref. We, of course, we could just say this is equal to something. That's, that's easy. But I want to be able to pass it to like the V subroutine without having to declare it. So, um, so that, and that's something you really can't do. Um, the, that as far as I know. So the things we want to subtract here are we want to subtract um, good, we didn't actually bother to get the positions of S and, and T in any uh, format, which is okay, good, 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 this is good. So now we actually want to actually get the positions of T and S um, and we could get the position of Q, but again we're going to make it relative, so Q is going to be at the origin. I don't think that's going to cause a problem. That's not really a, a change of um, that's not really a change of axes or a, cha you know, a, a transform. It's just a simpler way of doing things because we only have to compute two, two vectors. And even though this is really efficient, we should minimize the number of vectors. Um, I don't know why, though. So we want to compute the position of S and T with... And I get to use WRT with means... With, I'm actually going to spell it out. With respect to Q. And again, this is in just some arbitrary format. We don't even know if they're plus or minus. But hopefully, if we do our math correctly, it's not going to matter. Uh, so we need spice double s pos 3 and t pos 3. And then 
I'm going to cheat and use my diff code because I actually, um, because this is actually <laughs> exactly what I want. There we go. Obviously, I'm going to need to um, need to remove the little minus sign in front of it, and I also will need to change the. Um, Um, okay, we will need something called, it'll measure light travel time for you, you can't, you can't not get that information, so you've got to pass it at an address of the suffice double, it's going to return, We're not, we don't really care what it is. Um, ET is coming in from uh, outer space, that's where ET is coming, no, ET is coming in as one of the signatures, uh, S and T are coming in as from the function, so that's, that we don't need to do anything with those. Uh, Q is coming in also from the, uh, from the uh, signature, it's coming into the function, so I think we're fine. So I think this should all work. Um, and now it is time to once again be paranoid and compile. Today on paranoid and oh 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 oh. Statement with no effect, unused value. Okay. Because I'm. <laughs> I think that's because I'm creating s pause and t pause and not doing anything with them. Although that will change your name. Oh. Why did, how did that even compile? Or did it? Um, let's try that one more time. Alright. So. Okay, again. Lots of warnings here, but it does compile. Okay, so now we're going to take the, um, let's see. Trouble. Compute umbral point. That's what we're doing now. Um, so the first thing we do is subtract s from t and give it to umvec. That's the vector. Um, and again, this is because we're going from. Let's see. God damn it. S minus t will take you from t to s. So we are actually doing this variable in the forward direction. Okay. Now we know the length of pt because we we've, we've computed it 10 billion times. Um, or actually, we haven't. But but that's okay. I, we will in just a sec. Um, so all we need to do is take this vector and extend it from t in the negative direction uh, by pt. Not really that difficult, but it's going to take a little bit of work. Um, so we have the umbral vector now, and we are going to now we're not going to compute pt, which is uh, st times tr over. Uh, SR minus TR, I think. Make sure that's correct. It is. Um, and we have the... Um, we might as well just call this thing uh, PT. Distance from umbral point to T. And when I say T, I mean the center of T. I think that is understood, though. And that is the value of PT. And this time, we actually can do the assign at the same time, because it's a very simple assign. We're going to run into a problem here, but, but that's okay. Um... What do we want to call this? Umdist? Oh no, we might as well call it PT. And because we're going to kind of name this PT. So spice double equals the umbral distance here. ST, which we don't have, and that's where we're running into the problem. But we did compute um, the values of the positions, but we need to know the, uh, the norm of the difference between them. What's really nice here is we've computed umvec, which is th the vector that goes between them, so the distance between them, ST, is going to be the norm of this vector. Um, uh, and this, we've already decided is going to be, and again, we can do it uh, declare and use at the same time here, because this is a, a vector norm, um, and it's just a double, so there we go. So now we have st, which is st, times tr, which is tr. That's awesome, isn't it? SR minus tr. Um, got to be a little bit, oh yeah, PT is a distance. Now, we haven't, the umbral point is a little bit different, obviously. Uh, this is just the distance between P and T, but that's fine. Um, so now what we need to do is take the, um, okay, so now, now we have the, the step of where we take the umbral vector, we flip it, uh, and, we and we make it of length uh, PT. So, uh, Let's see what we can do here. Um, so it's actually not that hard to do. Um, and I think I want to give it a different name, although 
and I'm going to cheat here. I'm not going to use the C spice functions. It's really easy to do this, but okay. So flip um um vec. Um, make it length PT, and then um, you're not going to actually leave it in the same direction. I'm going to have to flip it because I can just do V sub. Okay. So make um vec length PT. Okay, so we'll have, it'll be this vector, and subtract from t. From t. And I think we are going to need another point for this, but I'm going to do a little bit of, yes, this is just a comment. Um, I, I definitely want to keep a, have a, a, a value for umbral point. Um, Okay. There's there are ways to do this using the uh, the C uh, spice libraries, but this is actually not that hard to do, because really, um, this is a very simple transformation. So all we're going to say is um point of i is going to be um, okay. I'll be a little bit careful here. We have um, we have um vec. We even know the uh, the the uh, the length of umvec, which is st. So this makes it down to a, a vector of um, of this makes it a uh, unit vector vector of size one because we've taken it. Oh, sorry, umvec i. This makes e the axis uh, the total the total size will become one. It will become a normal vector, uh, but we don't want it to be normal. We actually want it to be of size pt. So we do this. So now what this will do is it will umbral point will be assigned to a vector that is in the same direction as umvec, uh, but is has length pt, because we divide the, the norm multiplied by pt, we have that, so we now have um, this vector. We now want to subtract it off from t, or t pause, rather. Um, so we can do this. Take t pause, subtract off the umbral vector, and it's that simple. We could have gone through like three or four spice C functions. There's nothing wrong with the C spice functions, by the way. They're they're good functions. They're, they're, they're very well written, and they're actually written a long time ago. And you know, it's kind of uh, kind of back in the day where uh, people um, sometimes wrote sloppy code. It's really well written for you know code that was sort of maybe hacked together just to get some answers. I don't know if it was though. Okay. So now we have the umbral point, we have the umbral vector, and now what we need is the umbral angle. So we're going to say, and I think we can once again, and I'm going to be sloppy here, I'm going to call u the umbral angle, although I probably should call it like half the umbral angle. To me this is the umbral angle. And it's going to be st minus tr over s, wait, st minus over, what the hell? I can't be right. That simplifies. Um, SR minus TR over ST. That is a mistake. SR over TR minus TR. That makes a lot more sense, actually. Okay. I was being sloppy yesterday. So let's just make sure that's correct. Um, SR minus TR over ST, and this one also simplifies SR. Yeah, that's what it is. It's SR minus TR over ST. And that, of course, that's that's the... Um, um, okay. Uh, now, I'm, I'm it's theoretically possible that the value I'm putting in here is greater than 1, and you can't take the arc sign of that, or, or less than negative 1, for that matter. Um... I'm not going to check that condition because if we're doing things correctly, that condition should never arise. Uh, this umbral angle can be as small as zero. It can be as big as um, 180, but it can't really be bigger than that because even if the things are right up against them, it's not going to it's not going to work for things that are on the negative side. Pretend that made sense, uh, but I don't see us ever putting in um, a value that's bigger than one here. 
Now, some of you are going to say, well, what, wait a minute, what if we had the sun size to be smaller than TR, then this value uh, could be, uh, could be, uh, well, let's see, actually, maybe not. I mean, even to have these things, if these things were absolutely touching, maybe you could get, get to one. But anyway, I think, I think this is fine. All right, so we're going to go ahead and define the umbral angle. And uh, let's see, what's the other thing we need? We have uh, the, the umbral point, the umbral angle, and the vector that points sort of towards uh, you know, the points down the middle of the umbral axis. So now what we want to do is we want to compute the angle of Q, wherever the hell it is, uh, against this, um, against this uh, PT here, this, the vector PT, capital P, capital T, uh, not the distance PT. Uh, which is actually really easy to do because all we have to do there is there's a there's even a vector angle function um, The angle between this vector and the Q vector and compare it to U. Did I actually did I actually compute you? I did um, um angle. Okay, so let's uh, see what that is that V angle I'm being lazy here and doing this. There's a I mean, there's a really easy way to All right, that's part of the diff <laughs> I think it's Vecang C or something. I always forget what it is, though. Uh, Vec Sep. Sep Vec? V Sep. V Sep C. Okay. Right? And that's going to be the vector of separation between the umbral angle and, um, uh, and I go, this is actually going to also return, um, we're going to call this angle and since this returns a double, we can just assign it the way we want to here. And that's going to be the distance between, did we ever, oh, Q is at zero. Ooh, shiny. Wait, there's something wrong here. Um, so the way we're working, Q is at zero, but that, Obviously, we can't take the angle from from the origin. That's a that's a m m meaningless thing. All right, because over here, um, over here, t is at our origin. I mean, just for our diagram. So I guess um, let's see. So we computed s pause, t pause. So uh, I guess we actually have like a q in here somewhere that we didn't even really look at yet, um, but we used it to get s t and p t and all this good stuff. Um, so the position of Q in this diagram that we're using um, is going to be, um, so we need the vector between PT and PQ. Um, so wherever Q was, um, all right, so we know PQ. Uh, this is not a hard thing to get. I just need to figure out how to get it. Um, because we, we are we are using this sort of... I mean, this is okay. This will work. Uh, but it just looks weird because we don't... Our, our Q is somewhere else. It's in, in, its, its, in its own space. It's in the origin. But in this diagram, it is not at the origin. And we can actually make it easier to see that by getting rid of these axes. They don't actually contribute anything to what we're doing. In fact, I thought we had gotten rid of these axes, or at least the numbers on them. Um, so Q is going to be somewhere over here. This is Q. This is fine. We did this. Uh, we have this point. So, um, so what are we looking for here? We're looking for... Um, what are we looking for here? All right. We're looking for the angle between uh, this and Q. Um, but we don't know exactly, well, we, we know where Q is, but I mean, uh, how do we find that? Is it PQ? We know TQ and SQ, I mean, we obviously know PQ and SQ. Um, all right, so wherever Q is, we know Q, QT, or T. well, we actually know QT, because we looked at T from Q. That's fine, though. And we know TP, so I guess we're going to do a little bit of vector addition here. Um, PQ, so I'm not liking my diagram as much now. Um, PQ is going to be the vector from P to wherever the hell Q is. Um, and we have QT and PT. Alright, so how do we get to PQ? So if we're 
PQ equals um, we can go from P to T and right, right, we can go from P to T and then from T to Q which is negative QT so there we go so that's a vector subtraction we need to do to find um, to find this um, where is Q uh, compared to P that's what we really want so it's, it's not a question of axes it's a question of we need to know where it is with respect to P and I'm going to say with respect to here but this time I'm going to abbreviate it just to confuse people with respect to P okay um, so this is going to be a uh, PQ want to make sure we're getting our angles right PT PQ okay good so PQ is going to be go from Q to T which we know how to do um, no go from P to T and then T to Q so that's PT plus TQ which is B we don't actually have we have QT so it's PT minus QT because that's the reverse vector. Okay. Um, let's see. What do we have? We have PT. Um, do we have PT? Did we mess with PT? PT is actually... Hmm. We have... It, we, we have... <laughs> we have the umbral vector, but it actually goes from... T to S. It doesn't. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, a, a size issue. We just need to shrink it down. But let's see if we can do this um, super magically, uh, uh, which might be a bad idea, by the way. Uh, so we're going to P to T to T to Q to get PQ, or we can go from P to S. But that's yeah, that's probably not great either because we the vector we have is this one, and we have this vector also. So we could add them, but that's kind of pointless because that would bring us back to our. Uh, are, you know, that's that would just bring us to the vector that some of these two vectors, which we already know exist, so that's not a huge thing to do there. Oh, how do we get to this cleverly? By the way, too much cleverness is really a bad thing. I mean, you know, I, at some point I should say P to T uh, minus Q T. Let's just do that. Okay. Did my Okay, for some reason I thought that my cursor jumped around here. Not a huge deal, but a little bit weird. Okay. So, P to T we already have. Okay, so we, we sort of have it. We have, we have the, um, we have the distance, certainly, but we don't have the vector. The vector we have is umvec, which is S to T, so we need to, and here we convert it to, um, oh, actually, here we actually have it. This is actually the vector uh, converted to the si correct size, and we're subtracting it from t pause. Uh, so we might be able to pull off something like that here. Um, I think I, I already said angle q. God damn it! But we're not going to be able to compute it quite as easily. We're going to need to do a little bit of work here. Um, oh, actually. Um, Q pause is what this is going to be. It's going to be three dimensional. And I think we can get it by, say, PT minus. And this here is PT. It's, you know, it's ST divided by ST times PT. So it is, it is uh, PT uh, without the minus sign. Okay, so once again, we're going to do this little fudge thing here. Uh, for okay, so umbral point. In this case, we're computing Q pause of I. So this here is PT, right? It's the umbral vector, I mean, the component of PT. Uh, divided by ST, multiplied by PT, so it's the correct vector. And we want to say minus QT. Um, QT, of course, is in our, in our system T pause. And I think that should be correct. Um, the only thing that bugs me is, I guess, this coordinate system here has Q at the origin. Um, but I guess after we do all these subtractions and additions, 
doesn't really matter where Q is. I mean, we, we don't really, you know, we, Q is no longer at the origin there. Um, that still bu bugs me, even though I just said that it still bugs me. Okay, so this should give us Q pause. Um, and now what we want is the Q angle. The angle between the angle between this sucker and wherever wherever this is. So that's really easy to do if I can ever remember. It's V sep C of angle Q and um, You know, I'm beginning to think we should actually just define vector PT um, instead of going through this. But I mean, this is the angle between this, and in this case, we can just use the vector ST. It doesn't really matter. Now, something tells me I've messed up. Oh, the umbral, the umbral vector, yeah, the umvect. Um, because it's, it's the same, it has different length, but it's the same direction. Uh, um, umvect. Um, so it'd be nice if we, if we assign this a name. So it's actually the separation between Q pause and this, and we want to give it the name angle Q. Okay. So the odds that this is going to work are so close to zero that I wouldn't even give you odds. So now we're going to try printing these out, just looking at them in some, you know, some we're doing some common sense testing now. Um, uh, let's see. So we're going to do a bunch of printfs here. Um, I don't think I care about the radii. Um, I do care about the positions of the planets compared to Q. And I'm not going to say compared to Q here, but that is that is what we're doing. Maybe I'm just going to make this into like a subroutine or something. Print print vector with label. So T pause. We also want to know where that is with respect to Q, even though we don't say that. Finally, not finally. We also want the umbral. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, this is the umbral vector, dude. And then umbral point. So we need both of those. Okay, so then we're going to print out the umbral vector, which uh, the common sense tells us should go between S and T, obviously. It's what, literally what it is. Um, and then something tells me we should get the like the normalized umbral vector or the one from p to t uh just same direction different different length but but i think we're going to not do that um okay so that's the umbral vector now of course this could this is just the norm of the umbral vector but hey if we're going to print out stuff we might as well do it um, uh, st. Okay, so we're just saying len st and then len of pt. Um, okay. And then we get the umbral point. And I'm going to do something really ugly, by the way, in just a minute. So if you are, if you're interested, um, stay tuned or something. I guess uh, umbral point. Um, and then we do this really ugly. Is I'm going to use GeoGebra in such a terrible way that um, that it will make people cry. It'll make me cry. So, uh, but silently probably, so you won't hear it. Uh, but we're going to use it to sort of test some of these things here. Uh, the umbral angle, and this is this is sort of where we're getting very very close to the answer. The umbral angle and the the angle Q are the ones that we compare to each other. So we'll say umang. Let's see. Let's just call that angle of the umbra. Um, do we care about Q pause? Mm. 
Yeah, the problem here is we, we're in a different coordinate system now. Um, so I can't I can't do all three of these, S-pos, T-pos, and Q-pos, because if S-pos and T-pos are relative to a Q-pos of, of the origin. So I don't think we're going to print that out. That would be confusing. Um, and then the mysterious angle Q. Uh, also this. And this is the part where I, I think I've done something wrong, maybe. But let's let's go ahead and print it out. The first step to debugging is admitting that you're wrong, or admitting you have a problem. That's also the first step to uh, curing alcoholism, I think. So well, it works for either one. Okay, hello, people who have joined me. Um, if you have any comments, um, questions, anything, just say them in chat, and I will. If I can see them, if I remember to look, I will answer them. Okay, now let's see if this still compiles. Always, always a concern. Okay. Cast from pointer to integer uh, in spice zim. Um, aha! Wait, what? Expansion in macro v sub. Okay, so I've done something wrong with my v sub here. Um, S and T, yes, yeah, so it would be good if I said S pause and T pause, which are actually vectors, and not S and T, which are integers. That would be, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, <laughs> we are going to use QR at some point, but it, that it is correct in saying it is not uh, right now being, um, is not right now being used. Um, and now let's see if we can do BC occultations. I sense this is going to be a really bad idea, though. I think the problem here is I, I don't have anything. Oh, wow, cool. Um, okay, and we're not planar anymore, so that's that's another issue. Uh, so the umbral vector should be the, and I think it actually is. I mean, these numbers are so small that we're not really seeing it, but it, they are. Uh, the length between S and T and between P and T. Yeah, it would be good if I knew what the hell I was talking about here. The umbral point. Oh, and I forgot to put a new line after the umbral point. Yeah, and my hope was we could draw this all up in um, uh, up in uh, GeoGebra. Um, but I think these numbers are going to kill even the 3D version, and because we're not doing the matrix rotation these points are in 3D and that might be a sort of difficult to uh, to comprehend what we're doing here. Um, so, um, yeah, let's go ahead and just recompile it because th this is like really lazy. If we were doing this in like real life, uh, I think I've said this enough times so I won't say it again, but anyway. Um, umbral angle is this. Um, and the angle with Q is this. So I suppose at some point we could look for where the umbral angle is. Uh, uh, the angle with Q. Oh yeah, then this, there's another issue here. This tells us the angle to the middle of Q. But we really need to know it's sort of the both, the both spherical coordinates of Q. Um, this would be the condition for like a central eclipse. Uh, but let's see if we're anywhere close to it. Let's just, uh, let's just go crazy and see if we ever get to where the center of Q is falls within the umbra, or at least gets close. Um, maybe not. Maybe never. And to actually use this in something useful, we probably need to print out the time as well. Uh, so let's let's do a couple of things here. I'm going to go ahead and save this to, uh, to GitHub, because we have reached a point where it's somewhat usable. Or, sorry, it compiles and it does things. Uh, not guaranteeing any, guaranteeing any usability there. So now, if angle Q is less than um angle, and it occurs to me we, I think VSEP will always uh, return a positive number. So I don't think we need to worry about absolute values here. Printf eclipse, question mark. And I guess we actually want to print out ET as well. And actually, we want to print out ET all the time. We don't want to, yeah, we do want to, or at least Unix time. Unix, print 
Let's say F design. Um, ET to Unix of ET. Looks good. Compile. It still compiles. I'm so impressed. Okay. Okay, so there's no point where there's an eclipse, but let's go ahead and flip this a little bit. Uh, I keep forgetting what the order is, but luckily I can do this. Wait a minute. I could have sworn I cho cho changed those instructions. Hang on. Something might be ugly. Something might be rotten in the Denmark. Okay. Hey. I could have sworn I put a... Um... um I mean, I did here, but I kind of sort of put it in here as well. Uh-oh. We might have to be looking at BC occultation, see what the hell's going on. Well, okay, that, that actually made sense. I don't know if you can get TK a single file. I, I mean, there's, there's ways to, once you do it, there's ways to, uh, yep, but you can. Um... So what the hell did I do here? Um, oh, and I guess I need to shrink GT get a little bit so we can see everything. Um, I didn't change the um, I didn't change the instructions for how to use it. Um, oh. I think maybe I changed this, but I didn't change the uh, the help message that comes up. Um, if there's too few arguments. All right, let me see if that's what I did by mistake. Yes, it is. So uh, what I need to do here is I just need to say moon equals observer, sun equals light source, planet equals shadower. Uh, so this will be uh, that. That's really kind of an ugly error on my part there. And there's really no reason to remake this, but because I kind of know what I'm... Whoa, 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 whoa. No, sorry, that's something else. Um, okay. So we know there are lunar eclipses, so we'll make the observer the moon, the sun will be our light source, and Earth will be our planet, and the year will be... It's 2020! Dun, 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 dun. I'm sure there's a total lunar eclipse sometime this year. Okay. And it would be kind of nice if it said, like, put a little up arrow there, but okay. So is there an eclipse at this time? Let's find out. So this says June 21st of this year, there'll be a total lunar eclipse. Probably, maybe, who knows? Um, time did we have here? June 21st. Um, okay, well, let's let's see if that's a total eclipse. Uh, penumbral. Okay. Now, the badness here is that this is June 21st, and that looks like it's an annular frickin' solar eclipse. Um, so I've really messed this up. Um, but does it start at 4.22 a.m.? If it does, I've got, like, something really weird going on there. Um, uh, oh, I, I want to see the, um, okay, they don't... There was a page I had that showed the actual, like, details. Um, you would think I would have bookmarked it. And did I? Uh, apparently not. Is it in my history? Well, probably somewhere in here, yeah? Let's, let's see if we can find it. We will find it and we will highlight it. Oh yeah, in fact, I think I've got it pinned right there. 
Um, and now you get a star as well. You get to be bookmarked. I won't bother to actually put a description there because that would be too convenient. So is this the... No, this is not the one we're looking for. Uh, eclipses, June 21st. Uh, lots of bad things are happening now. Um, first location to see the full eclipse begin 447. That's not even that close to that. Okay, so we've got to figure out what the hell I've done wrong here. And the way to do that... Uh, the way to do that is we're going to try to diagram this, although... Oh, I am really, really suspicious of this not working correctly. But hey. What the hell? Okay, let's just go here where we're like sort of in the middle of the eclipse. And that would be... Yeah, and that does seem like it's, it's, it is inside the eclipse. So now we're going to do something that's so terrible um, that I don't want to do it. GeoGebra, we're going to use the 3D platform. And... Really? See, I don't think this is going to work. This is a three-dimensional point, certainly. Um, I wonder if there's a way to, like, add... Oh, shit, this is just not going to work, is the problem. Unless it does. In that case, it will work. <laughs> That's a tautology. Wait. Oh, this minus sign belongs to this guy. Um... One of the only reasons I'm curious is because if this does work, it'll be really useful. If it doesn't work, we, we can get around doing stuff with it. Okay. So now, you're only not going to see A on this, like, 0 to 5 thing, so... Show A. Wait. Oh, for a second, I thought that was A. Um, let's see. Duplicate show trace. I don't know what that actually means. Um... Settings. Oh, wow, this is nice. Um, so I guess what I need to do is change my freaking access. Ac my ac Yo mama. Uh, is this, what, which object is this? This is S. This is the sun. Oh. Um, I'm just even curious if I can do this. Let's see. Um... I don't think not showing the axis. We need to change the axis settings. We need to change the so the x-axis. Um, nope, that's what we want. Yeah, I think I might have rounding two decimal font size. Yada yada yada. yada. Show x-axis. What the hell? I don't want to even know what this does. Um, can we label? It's fine. Unit. Uh, meaningless. We do allow it to be selected, which we just did to get here. Um, the only thing I'm thinking of here is... Oh, maybe this is what we need. So that we can make this distance like 200,000? God, I just, I, I feel like I shouldn't be doing that. Oh, wow. Apparently, however I did it, I did make that 200,000. All right, we still can't see A, but that's, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, seriously? So we actually be need, need we actually be needing. I guess we're going to need like a billion on all three of them. All three axes. Um, not cool. Or, ooh. Or. 
fuck this. Um, I, I think if I do this, I should get like a new, uh, a new set of axes and everything. But in fact, if I sign in, I should actually be able to create my own stuff, uh, unless I am signed in. Oh. No, we, we, we are at the new now. Okay, so what we could do here is we could give the distances in astronomical units, which is actually what uh, NASA does to make the numbers more reasonable. Um, it's still it's still going to look a little bit weird because um, the Earth and the Moon are really, really close to each other uh, in terms of astronomical units. Uh, but let's see if that helps. So... Um, the units we have right now are kilometers. Uh, to go to astronomical units, we need to figure out how big an astronomical unit is. And this is actually somewhere inside of C-Spice, but uh, I don't know where the hell that is, so let's... Uh, let's astronomically... It's actually defined to be like some weird number. Um, and it actually has a very precise definition. Uh, roughly 150. Well, you know what? We're gonna go... We're gonna be rough, man. Um, so that should be it, and then the nice thing is if we ever decide not to do this, we can just reset AU to be 1, which means I probably should have called it a factor instead of a, instead of an astronomical unit, but anyway, U, now the umbral vector of course is just a vector, so that size doesn't matter, haha, <laughs> you hear that a lot, um, those are lengths, so we actually do need to put AUs over them. The angles we don't need to. Um, the umbral point we do need to. I hope this scaling is... Um, doesn't break anything. I mean, it's already broken, but it's kind of not broken. Okay. Alrighty, so we're going to use this here. Now I'm beginning to think maybe I've gone... Well, no, no, let's just try this. Okay. GeoGebra, where are you? Nice. Wait, what? No, no. No, no, no. Well, you know, if we're going to go... We might as well do this whole hog, right? If we're going to we're going to do it. If you're going to do it, do it right. Right. Do it with me. And that's uh, George Michael. He's dead, by the way. Um, so if you do want to do it to with him, uh, that would be uh, that would be necrophilia. Okay. Might as well put commas in here if we're going to cut and paste this into uh, GeoGebra anyway. Um, that's one thing I, I think I've said it a hundred billion times, so I won't again, but... Uh, I won't say, it, I'll say it in the reverse direction. That's what I love about modern programming is com compilation is so fast, you can uh, constantly change things. So let's get the sun in there. Here comes the sun. Ooh, 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 ooh. What the hell? That's not what I meant to do. Or is it? Hang on. No. All right. And I guess if I'd been really clever, I would have put parentheses around this. If you like it, put parentheses around it. Is not a Seriously? If you'd like to put a parenthesis on it. Okay. Is it because comma is being treated as a... No? That'd be kind of funny if I, if I went through all this effort to put commas in and then it doesn't let me... It doesn't like commas. Yeah, that was kind of, that was kind of stupid of me. Anyway. Okay, and maybe it's because I don't have... So let's just go frickin' whole frickin' hog. And I think if you put parentheses around it, it will accept the commas because it'll make sense to what it's doing. It'll, it'll make sense to the, to the parser that I'm creating a point. Um, the umbral vector probably is not a point, but we'll do that anyway. Um, all right. I say nine billionth times a charm. I'm, s I'm beginning to see that I have some catchphrases that I really don't want to have, but um, okay, there. So let's put this for s pause. 
I sense trouble up ahead. Cool. There is the sun. Da 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 da. And we're calling. I don't care that we're calling it point uh, A right now. We can we can change that. T pause. Da 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 da. Okay. Kind of bad because I think we're going to need. Oh, that is actually really close to zero. Um, umbral vector which I don't care for and Q is presumably at the origin here which means this is actually kind of bad because the moon is at the same point as the um, as the uh, as the earth so what are we thinking um, uh, let's see What am I thinking? I've been on for about an hour. Oh, cool. We got a rotation going and kept it going. I want to watch that for a sec. That is awesome. It's kind of a little bit jerky on the um, on the uh, on the broadcast, but but it looks pretty damn cool on the monitor. Okay, um, I think I've been broadcasting now for about an hour. Uh, I guess I didn't really want to have streams that were an hour long, but I guess that's what's happened. So I'm going to go ahead and break now, and we're going to come back. We're going to try to. I don't think it's that difficult. We're going to try to figure this out um, and and see where we've made the mistake by drawing it in 3D. Although, if worse comes to worse, we could probably do it in 2D because um, we you know we know these are sort of actually all in the same plane uh, through a matrix transform. Thank you for watching, and hope you'll watch later today, assuming get, I get around to streaming then.